<laughs> hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? This is the letter coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Another smoky and hot day out here in, on the West Coast in California, Northern California. Another hot and smoky day. It's about 2 in the afternoon, just kicking it. Go out for a little motorcycle ride a little bit later for when it cools down a little bit. But anyway, I got a new one for you today. I did an unboxing video on it, and I had a couple bloopers in it, so I decided to do the video over so you don't get to see the total unboxing in this one. But that's it. The Bare Knuckle by Kershaw. USA made Bare Knuckle. Flipper. And yes, this one is, I think you could call it a frame lock. coming from Amazon. I paid $77 or something like that for it. Made in USA. You know me, I save my boxes. Putting everything away. Kershaw. Okay, I got the specs for it on here. Let me read, read you the specs really quick. Okay, blade length, three and a half inches. Closed length, 4.7 inches. Overall, overall length, 8.2 inches. Weight, 3.4 ounces. The blade steel, Sandvik. Sandvik 14C28N. And they have it written in here at the, for the literature. The overall highest performing knife steel and still maintains a productivity benefit of being fine blankable. The strong blade with a long piercing tip defines the knife. And this is Amazon. This, this is the one that I bought. And it was $77.46. One day shipping. Free shipping. All right, got that out the way. They didn't list the blade thickness, so let's look at the blade thickness really quick. Well, first, let me show you the knife, huh? Nicely centered blade. I like the black stone wash. 6061 aluminum handles with a OD green finish on it. <clears throat> the lock bar is black. The frame lock, lock bar, or whatever you want to call it. And this one's a total flipper, like I like. I tend to like the knives when, when they're flippers just to be flippers. I don't need it to be a thumb thumb lock or, or, or a thumb hole or thumb stud or, or wave waveable or whatever. I don't need all that. I just I just want it to be a flipper. And one of the reasons why I like flippers, the other reason besides the safety reason of the flipper, is that you don't have to have nothing on the blade. So when you go to cut stuff, there's no thumb stud or anything to get in the way of whatever you're cutting or slicing. So I think it makes it, you know, more comfortable to use, easier to use when it doesn't have a thumb set or something. It's another reason why I like flippers. This one, I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Performs perfectly. I think this is my first frame lock knife in ages. I haven't had a frame lock. I think the last frame lock knives I had were the Daryl Ralph um, Mad Max. Um, Camellias, Dara Ralph Mad Maxes, or Max, what do they call Max 5.5s. I had the Stilettos, and I also had the Bowie knives. And they had tit blue titanium handles with a, with a satin finish blade. Absolutely love those knives. I wish I would have never sold them. Those are, two, those are the set of knives I wish I would have kept. But I got offered a whole lot of money for them, so... And it was during a period of time when I started, when after I got hurt with the, the liner lock. I didn't want any more. I didn't want to. I, start, I sold off all my uh, liner locks and, and uh, frame locks. And they had D2 blades, I think that was. I think it was D2. And it was made by Camellias. But it was a Daryl Ralph design. This is a really nice knife. Absolutely love it. 
The blade stock is fairly thin. It looks like three millimeter. Let's see how let's see how thick the blade stock is. I my guess is three millimeter. Reminds me like a like bench made blade stock. Bench made always have like thin blade stocks too. Three point oh two. Three point oh four. Three point oh two. Three point oh two. Three point oh three. Two point four oh. So it's thinning out right here. And then the tip. Point eight six. It has nice billboarding on it too. I like the way it says Kershaw. Well, this side, this side is the side with the flag and the um, Made in USA. Beautiful looking blade. Do you guys like that blade? And look at that edge. Perfectly ground edge. It looks like a high saber type ground blade. Spear point type blade. Very nicely made. I like the pivot screws. Has a T8 and T6. Absolutely love it. Pocket clip says Kershaw on it. Real small pocket clip. I sort of like that. The pocket clip screws though aren't flush mounted. It feels really good. It feels like a quality knife in my hand. And my, I got this one, I was sort of looking for, because I've been wanting to try out some, uh, a couple of liner locks and, and a few uh, frame lock knives with flippers. Because after having the, the Gobi, it made me, made, me, made me realize I need to try out a couple of these other knives too with, with flippers that are also safe, that I would call safe in my hand. I don't like I don't like liner knock knives without flippers. Let me get that out there. If it doesn't have a flipper, I'm not interested in it. That pretty much goes for all the knives that have like the weaker locks, the less dependable locks, you know, like the locks that we've seen fail in, in the cold steel tests and stuff like that. And most locks to me if they're they're, they're sufficient if they have a flipper. Cause the the main thing about a lock locking mechanism for me is that I want to be safe. I want to feel like it's safe to use. And like if I have to use it for a self-defense situation, I want to feel like it's not going to fold it back in my hand and cut me up. And when you got, when you have the flipper, like I've said before, the knife can't fold back on your hand even when it comes disengaged. So I, I feel, I feel safe with the flipper. And that's the main reason why I like triad locks and stuff like that. And I've always liked triad locks because I felt safe with the triad lock. Because I know that knife, you know, a triad lock to me is like the closest thing you can get to having a folding fixed blade. A triad lock and a deadbolt. Those two lock types right there, I think, are pretty much, you know, very safe locks. You don't need, they don't, those, kni those knives don't need to have flipper tabs, if you ask me. And the same thing goes with, like, I like, I like the heavy-duty Benchmade um, access locks, too. Because those are very strong, also. We've seen those tested on, during the cold steel test with Andrew Demko and stuff, and... Those held like 400 pounds, and you know they did they did excellent with the axis lock. But all the other locks, like button locks, plunge locks, liner locks, compression locks, all the other types of locks, if I'm going to have one, a liner lock or or a frame lock, if I'm going to have one, I want it to have a flipper. Because when it has a flipper, it gives it the added safety feature that makes me feel comfortable and have confidence that I'm not going to get hurt using the knife. But anyway, let's go through some of my favorites. These are some of my favorite small knives I've been trying out for the last couple of years. And I absolutely love all these knives. I would highly recommend all these knives. And this is the newest one to the bunch. The Kershaw. American made Kershaw. Bare Knuckle. That's the, that's the name of this one, the model name. This is the one with the OD green handle scales. And this is a manual one. They make these in assisted too. I didn't want an assisted one. This is a manual. And uh, this has the OD green handles and the, the 14C28 
in Sandvik steel, Swedish Sandvik steel, which is highly highly uh, rust resistant, from my understanding, and it holds a, holds a good edge. Good knife for a worker's knife. I mean, good knife steel. Okay, this is my uh, sliver axe. This is probably the one that I carry the most out of all of these. But you know, I say when I say I'm carrying it the most out of all of these, don't include the new Kershaw because that's brand new. I just received that yesterday, so it hasn't had a chance to get out there and get used and everything yet. But out of the ones that have had a chance to get out there and get used, this is probably my favorite one to carry every day to work. Why? Because it's super light. It's super light. You forget this in your pocket. And you got you got um, three and about three and three quarter inches of blade cutting edge. It's a three and a half inch blade, but it's actually got a three and three quarter inches of of cutting edge. So you got lots of cutting edge. Yet yeah, it's very very lightweight. So three three and a half millimeter blade blade stock. It's got the carbon fiber. Um, what do you call them? Uh, Laminated G10 handle scales, <clears throat> and these aren't shiny. I, I love these. This carbon fiber um, handle scale over the G10 overlay over the G10. I, I really like this one. This one really does it for me. I really like it. Highly recommend this one. Highly recommend it. The only thing, only thing, the only thing, the only gripe about it is that it really doesn't have a detent. The detent is really weak on this one. So when you go to um, to flick it out, you got you got to be like a de dedicated flip. If you just like do a relaxed flip, you'll probably fail. You got to really you know put some, put a little bit of pressure on it, and it comes out perfect every time. You just have to know how to use this one. Next one up, next up, my, my favorite, the the sec the one I carry the next most, and you can tell by the pocket clip. Is my hug, hug micro flip. My little hug micro flip. This is a very high quality little knife. That's the way I, I like to describe it. So it's got a CPM 154 stainless steel blade. I've never had to resharpen it. It holds the edge very well. It's been stropped a little bit, but it's never been resharpened or reprofiled or anything like that. Excellent little blade. And this is one I like to carry when I need to carry a small blade because I might be going somewhere where there's like blade limits and things like that. And I'll carry a small blade. I always carry something. I don't like to be without anything. Excellent little knife. I think it's a... Uh, let me see how, let, let's see how long the blade is. I want to say it's a little bit shorter than three inches. Blade length, two and a half inches. Two and a half inches. And that makes it pretty much legal everywhere in California, except for like government buildings and schools and things like that. But everywhere in California, you know, I think the smallest blade limits that you have in California are like three inches in the big cities. So this knife is legal everywhere in California, basically. And let me measure this blade too. See, I'll give you guys an exact measurement on this blade. Pretty sure it's three and a half inches if you go to the handle. Well, actually, it's less than three and a half. It's three and three eighths. And the cutting edge, the cutting edge is three and a half inches. Okay. So it's a little bit over three and a quarter inches for the blade length, and then the cutting edge is a, half, a three and a half inches. So this one's legal pretty much everywhere, too. Because most places in California, only a few places have blade limits where you, you have to have a knife that's three inches or smaller. And that's usually like in the Bay Area and stuff like that. But pretty much everywhere else is four inches. <clears throat> so this one's pretty much legal everywhere too. All these knives are, are pretty much legal everywhere in California. Another one that I carry a lot. I absolutely love carrying this one. I carry this one whenever I feel like I need to carry a heavy duty knife, or sometimes I just feel like G.I. Joe and I want to carry a, a military, what I would call a military style, style knife, a tactical knife. Because this one's definitely what I would call tactical. 
It's got um, Linda McCarter handle scales. It's got CTS 6 HP stainless steel. Um, I think the, the coating on this is Cerakote. I'm pretty sure it's Cerakote. And the blade thickness, I want to say it's probably 3.8 millimeters, something like that. Almost 4 millimeters. Let's, let's see. Okay. 3.9, 4 millimeter. 3.97, 4 millimeters thick. And that's my Sog Kiko. I love the compound grinds. This this knife is badass. This is probably one of the most badass little folders on the planet. Definitely one of the most heavy duty little folders on the planet. I love this knife. It's got the XR lock. It's basically like a small SOG seal. That'd be a good way to describe this one. It's like a small small SOG seal. If the SOG seal is too big for you, get the key coup. And they actually make this one in a carbon fiber. I have the carbon fiber one too, but I like the I like the, this, the one with this big, big, thick stainless steel liner is the best. I like the heavier one the best. Why? I don't know. It just it feels smoother or something. I don't know, the, the way it operates, it just feels smoother. The other one is like featherweight, though. It doesn't weigh hardly anything. The blade is heavier than the handle. This one is perfect for me, though. I like, I like this one with a little bit of weight. It's not super heavy. It's, let me see. Five point nine ounces, almost six ounces. For a knife with a three and a half inch blade. Is it three three inch or something like that? Three inch blade. Three inch blade. Almost seven and a half inches. A little bit past seven and a quarter. But the handle the handle fits real comfortably in hand. You get a four full four four finger grip. It's really nice. Really love the Saw Kiku. Another one. Now this one I've carried the least because I carried other Sogs, and I didn't have this one in my drawer. But I absolutely love the Terminus. The Terminus is another great knife. The Terminus has, let me see, I think, oh this is D2. It's a uh, Cerakoted D2, cryogenically uh, Treat it D2 with full stainless steel liners, G10 handle scales, G10 backspacer, the XR lock, it's a flipper. Excellent little knife. Excellent. Another little, it's less than three inches. This one would be legal everywhere in California also. Yep, it's a little bit under three inches, just a touch under three inches. And now we got the new one. This one's going in my drawer. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Let's see how sharp it is. Get some paper. Hold on. From the rear choil to the tip. Nice and slow. Rear choil to the tip. It's sharp. This is a sharp one, fellas. Guys and guys and gals, this is a sharp one. I would definitely call this one a sharp one. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. It's a nice size. It's nice and thin. You see the girth of the handle.
11.56 it's a nice finish too on this handle I don't know what I don't know what kind of finish that is but whatever they use it it's a, it's a high quality looking finish it doesn't look cheap very nice looking knife And without the with the blade stock not being too thick, only being three mil three millimeters, should be a nice slicer. Especially with that high flat grind and the super sharp blade. Well, I'm gonna try a couple more. Um, we call them frame locks. I have a couple more on the way. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet. But a couple more on the way. I wanted to get a ZT frame lock, but uh, I don't know, just they just felt too expensive for me. The one that there was one that I really liked that was 260 bucks, and I just couldn't call myself. I just couldn't bring myself to spend that much money for it. I don't know. I just don't, you know, frame locks are cool. Liner locks are okay. You know, but I don't want to spend a lot of, I don't really don't want to spend like a super whole lot of money for a frame lock or a liner lock. And that's just me. In my mind, I, you know, it's just like, I know that they're not the greatest locks. But I think that, I think they're a good lock though. If you just need a, a good work knife, you know, like what I do, you know, like carry knives to work or whatever and use it for light duty, light duty tasks. That's the main reason why you're getting a knife, you know, is, is to do things like that. A liner lock or a, flip or a frame lock or a button lock, plunge lock, ball bearing lock, what other kind of locks? A compression lock. All those locks, the, the weak, all the weaker locks, I think they're perfectly fine, you know, for those kind of jobs and those kind of tasks and smaller knives. And as long as they, long as they have um, a flipper tap. Because me, myself, I like to have a knife that I can use not only for work, but if something happens, an emergency happens, I want a knife that I can use it for emergency purposes too. Even though it's a small knife, I still want it to be capable of being a good defense tool, a good emergency tool. I want it to be a you know, good all-around knife. This knife feels like that. This knife feels like a, a really good quality knife. There's no blade wobble, no blade up and down or anything like that. It operates very smoothly. It's on ball bearings. I think they're like single, single row ball bearings because I can see them a little bit through the... Let me see if I can get this so you guys can maybe might be able to see them. I don't know if you can see them. But I can see, I can see that it has like ball bearings in it. I can see the ball bearings. And it looks like it has ceramic ball bearing on the detent. Or some kind of ball bearing on the detent. I don't know if it's ceramic or not. I absolutely love it. One thing that I noticed about the, the liner locks and the frame locks that I don't like over like the other type of locks is that you have to put your hand in the way of the of the blade and the path of the blade to close it but you know that's not that's why i have to do it with my cold steels too though so it's just another step that you have to do you know it's just a matter of getting used to a different knife which is no big deal you know that's why i think it's important to fidget and play with all your your knives and tools so you you get build up muscle memory and you can operate them without even thinking about them and you can operate them real efficiently too Let's line these bad boys up. Compare them. I think this is the next smallest one. All these knives I would highly recommend. For everyday work knives. This one this one's even a tactical knife. I would call this even a tactical knife. Or survival knife, or tactical, or woodcrafting, or anything like that. 
I think this one could do it all. This is a pretty heavy duty knife right here. The other ones, besides that one, these are all what I would call light duty. These are all light duty knives. They're good for a light duty task, not heavy duty cutting chores. It's not good for a, 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 a what do you call it, trying to split wood and and, and uh, doing all those kind of things with. I wouldn't do all those things with the, the, these knives. These are knives are meant to be like pocket knives, gentlemen's folders everyday cutting knives, knives that you don't, you know, you just need to like, I don't know, maybe slice an apple or <clears throat> open a package or open a letter, open your, open your mail for that, for those type of tasks. I know this one has more of a tactical look to it, but it's still pretty lightweight. It feels really lightweight too. Let's see how much it weighs. Three point six ounces. 3.6 ounces for the bare knuckle, the sliver axe. 3.3 ounces, it's even lighter. The terminus, sog terminus, 3.4 ounces, heavier than a sliver axe. Micro, micro flip, 2.6 ounces, the lightest of the bunch. And course, yeah, we know this one's 5.9, right? 5.9 ounces. The tank, the big daddy. The big boy. Hey, hey, hey! I don't want to call him Fat Albert, <laughs> but he's he's the big boy. This this is I, I love I love the Kiku XR. The Kiku XR is one of my favorite knives of all time. I love the Kiku XR. And uh, the Sliver Axe is another one of my favorites. Sliver Axe and the Micro Flips. I love these. I love all these three right here. Are probably my all three of these are in my drawer. So. I'll tell you right there that I really like them. And all three of these I've, I've used a lot. And so I could tell you that I really like them. I honestly like them. I like the way they function. They don't fall apart. The, the, you don't have to keep retightening the pivots or anything like that. It's just like they just excellently made knives. I know this one's an excellently made knife too because it's just like this one, only it's smaller. You know, it's, a, it's got the XR lock. And I've used, I've carried a lot of the XR lock knives, and, I, and the XR lock knives are awesome. The SOG XR lock knives, if you haven't tried one out, try one out. To me, they're one of the best. I like them, I, I love the access lock, but I like the XR lock because they incorporated a flipper into the, the access lock. So it makes it better. That I really love my flippers now. I, I, I pretty much turned into a flipper person. I, I guess I should change my name from stiletto to flipper. But that's pretty much all I've been carrying lately is flipper knives. And the reason why is because they're easy to operate. And a lot of the best light duty knives to me are the flipper knives. There's a lot of heavier duty flipper knives, you know, my, my bigger ones I carry. But for a light duty work knife, flipper knives rock. They rock, and I like. And it doesn't really matter which lock you get. You get whatever you know. Just get whatever knife that you like. And if it's got a big flipper tab, the lock's gonna be good enough. You don't really have to worry about having a super strong lock with a small, lightweight flipper knife for work that has a good flipper on it. I, I, I would still say it's gonna be safe. But anyway, I'm gonna put this one out there today. Today is, I think it's September fourth, Saturday. Is that right? Is it the fourth? I know it's my day off. It's my day off today. I got today and tomorrow off. And I'll probably do another one tomorrow. Put that one out. And it'll probably be a lot like this video, only I'm gonna do it on, on my knives that are, are put out by Asian manufacturers. These are put out by American manufacturers. Even though they're not all made in the United States. Lots of them are made overseas. This is overseas. This is overseas, this is overseas, and this is over. Now this, these two are United States. And these three are overseas. And I think oh, all three of these are made in Taiwan. But maybe this one might be China. I think the Terminus is made in China. The Terminus and the other, the other small, um, one with the XR lock from SOG, I think they're both made in China. <clears throat> and then the, the, uh, the Vision, and I forget the other names. 
but the ones with the, the CTS XHP steel, those are the ones that are made either in Taiwan or the United States. The seal is made in, in the United States. But this Kershaw, this is, a, this is the Kershaw that's made in the United States. It's a flipper. And this Microtech, all the hogs are made in the United States. And that's all I got for you today. Hope everybody's doing okay out there. Hope the, hope the weather where you're at is not crazy. I hope you're not getting flooded or you're, you're in a forest area and it's getting burned down. I just, it's, it's a mess right now in the United States. We got, I don't know, like four different disaster things going on. And it's like craziness, craziness. So, you know, even though we got out of Afghanistan kind of sloppy and stuff like that, I think it's good that we got out of Afghanistan because... Not only because I don't think we could really make any changes in that country, you know, it's kind of hard to change the way people think. But, uh, in, you know, in their country, the way that they've always been living, I don't know, you know, even though, you know, they live in ways that we don't agree with, it's their life, it's their country. You know, we, we don't live in their country, so, you know, we shouldn't be overly concerned with all that. But I think it's good that we got the country because I think, we're losing too many lives in that country. And um, they're spending too much money in the country, too. You know, we got we got things over here we need to take care of. The infrastructure, the roads in California suck. And I can remember when I was a kid, you know, the, the roads are all smooth and always fixed. And they always had greenery along the roads. You know, they always took care of the highways and stuff like that. They, they stopped doing all that stuff because they cut back. And... Uh, we need to spend more money on our own country. Our infrastructure is like way behind everybody else's. Our train system is way behind. I mean, you know, it's like, we, 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 there's things that we need to take care of here. But anyway, enough talk of that. Time to move on. Hope everybody's doing good out there. See you on the next one. Peace. Stiletto.